Do you remember Mr. Rogers? Is it a beautiful day in the neighborhood? Well, Danny and I were just talking about <laughs> Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. <laughs> and how are you doing today, Danny? This is the Existential Talk Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. How are you doing today, Danny? I'm doing well. You know, yeah, we were just talking about that movie with Tom Hanks and just Mr. Our, our joy of Mr. Rogers. It was a great show, though. It was. I really did enjoy that show. Not that this episode's yeah. about that, but still, it was a good show. <laughs> yeah, he, he's been in some really good... There was also another one, like My Name is Otis or something like uh, something like that. He did some other movie that was really good. Crazy good actor. Anyways. He does, yeah, Tom Hanks is all serious stuff now. I do mm-hmm. miss his comedies. Like, I watched uh, Big again recently, which is, like, such a good movie. And, like, Turner yeah. and Peach and stuff. Oh, and he doesn't yeah. do stuff like that anymore, which kind of bums me out, because I did like him as a like, mm-hmm. comedy actor. He's good. Taking yeah. on a serious role. So today, we're just going to be kind of spitballing, so they say. I mean, which is, you know, not yeah. a different It's a good time. old way to do it. Sometimes yeah. you can find out a little bit more about us, maybe relate to us as human beings, as opposed to just these two woke-ass MFers who are just, yeah. like, so enlightened and you should buy our courses and everything like that. Yeah. yeah. Once so, we get Danny, there, what's, going, <laughs> what's going on in your life? Just busy, man. You know, it's like, it's. I've had the weirdest feeling, and I've been having this recently, where, like, time feels like it's going by so fast and so slow simultaneously. And, like, I've always struggled. Like, my perception of time has never been great. I always have a hard time with it, like, knowing how long things are and stuff. And, like, it's just bizarre. Like, I feel like, like feel the week's going by so quickly. But then, like, I'll look and it seems, like, slow. I don't know. Too. Does that make sense? Am I making mm-hmm. sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, I feel you. Because, like, I think that part of, like, the the pace, the speed of life getting faster makes the slower times more painful. Maybe, yeah. Because we're doing stuff so much and so quickly that when there's actually like a free moment, instead of just relaxing, we're like, come on, why is nothing happening? Yeah, that's what's been killing me, right? Because like this weekend was Memorial Day, you know. And so I was like, well, I'm taking a day off, you know, because the one day, like I was like, I should take a day off. And like three hours into it, I'm like, what should I do? Like, I don't know what to do with myself. Uh You know, and it's like, and it's funny because like why... And I, I asked myself that, too, like in the middle of the day, I was like, why do I even feel like I need to do anything? Like nothing I do today, like granted, like I'm not going to just stop working every day, but like it's not going to make that much of a difference this day. One, it's a holiday, you know, everybody else is off anyway. But two, mm-hmm. like that one day of progress is not going to make that much of a difference. Why am I so worried about it? Like, what am I what am I worried about missing? And it's like, I don't even know how to answer that question. That's the other weird thing. Like, like, what am I afraid of missing? Answer me, Randy. Tell me. Dude, I'm right there with you because I keep thinking that what I'm actually doing is going to make any difference at all. That, you know, it might make some inconsequential difference. But when you think about it, really, you know, in like the sun death of the universe, not going to make any difference. Okay. In the scope of the planets and everything and all the other universes out there, not going to make a big difference. Yeah, we're never going to make a difference in this. I never, you know, that's another thing I never understood is people seem to want to make this huge, impactful difference in the world when you can't. Mm-hmm. Like, the only difference, it's like, I never understood this because like, the only thing it's going to affect is my life. And that's why I do anything is because I want to improve my life. But I never thought about like a legacy or anything. I don't under, there's nothing to be left. Nothing matters after I die nothing Mm -hmm. to me at least and so it's like you know is it like ego or something that you want to like or is it fear of death or what because like i don't know it's weird it's kind of interesting because like every once in a while i'll have these thoughts like well but what happens if there's some like freak accident i just like i get hit by a bus or like you know fall off some building and then like how does this impact other people's lives but then it's like well in the big scope of things it really doesn't like but but there's this it's the crazy mind just going nuts thinking like I'm so important. I've been the center of my own universe for as long as I've been alive. I'm clearly the center of all universes. Yeah. It is weird though. It's a weird feeling to have. And it's very like uh it's so egotistical, right? That like I should mm-hmm. be so important that I should matter to everybody. And like because what's funny is even like people that you would think would 
like Jeff Bezos, like the people that had so much influence, they're still going to die and days are going to move on and things are going to go back to normal. And like, you know, they won't be noticed. Look at Steve Jobs and he died. Did anybody exactly. talk about it after the next day? No. Did Apple fall apart? No. <laughs> yeah. But like people still worship him, but it doesn't matter because he's dead. And like he can't enjoy any experiences in life anymore because he's freaking dead. Yeah. And it's just like that's going to happen to all of us. Yeah. It's a crazy, crazy, you know, it's a weird thing to wrap your head around too. Cause like, it's like, you know, all we know is existence. I think about that a lot too. Like, you know, like, well, you know, like that before you're born or before you're conscious, what do you remember? And it's like nothing. So like, is that it? That's just going to be it then? Nothing. And it's like, so if that's the case, what's the Epicurus said, right? He said like, you know, when the soul and body basically like, he thought they were made of atoms. So when you die, the soul dissipates and the body dissipates. They're just composite things, right? So they turn back into their component parts. And he said, you know, so there's nothing to fear in death because there's nothing to sense. So there's like, there's no emotions. There's no sense of pain, no pleasure. There's nothing to sense. There is no sense. So there's mm-hmm. no sense in wearing, right? Because there's no sense of self. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's crazy because you. I, I think about that too. Like my grandparents have all died. And I think about like, I sometimes think like what that must have been like to die because it's crazy because they were here and then they're not and it's just and the world goes on but like that must have been such an experience for them yeah well because like you know i mean it does make sense in the sense that you were just saying like we're like you know we're used to experiencing the world from our own perspective right i'm the subject so it's like you're the star of the thing and so when you die it's like it is weird it's like is it the realization that like no you weren't you were just a bit player (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like the show goes on or what yeah that is weird it's very strange life is weird it just yeah. gets weirder the more you think about it too i think that's the problem mm-hmm. well it is just a whole bunch of paradoxes like everything because we make up because everything's made up by us so it is a paradox because it's all just bullshit <laughs> so i was i was thinking about that the other day with like studying because I I would I literally like study until my brain just doesn't function anymore and then I stop. And I was like, this is the craziest paradox because I'm quitting to not quit. Like I'm yeah. quitting studying so that I don't quit studying. But it's just like, yeah, everything's a paradox, man. Everything is. Everything is a paradox. It's very difficult. And clearly blanket statements are always true. Yeah. Wild <laughs> generalizations and blanket statements are my favorite kind of knowledge. <laughs> totally and if it rhymes it's got to be true <laughs> that's always the case yeah absolutely well, you know yeah, yeah. dude so Seriously. i've been dealing i've been dealing with a lot of anger and i think I've heard yeah i think well i i think talking about it is good because when i grew up anger was good. not allowed it was like strictly like <clears throat> you like repress that stuff until it causes you bodily harm that so was a that heart was attack and die, and then you're not <laughs> yeah. angry anymore. That was yeah. the rule. <laughs> but like, so like by experiencing anger, I also think it's partially because I've been lifting weights a lot. And uh, you know, I got my testosterone checked and it's on like the very high end of normal. So like maybe there's some ramifications from just high testosterone causing it. There could be, yeah. But uh so there's that, but also I I, I listened to something earlier where it was saying that like you know, some people like myself have a hard time dealing with anger because we fear we fear getting out of control or we fear that those people we care about will like uh, reject us because we're being angry. And like that that's something, yeah. dude, I actually I was talking with a friend earlier today. This was one who we were talking about being old men. And I was complaining about some of the stuff that makes me angry. And I could tell that he was like getting a little bit off put that I was actually verbalizing that I get angry. And I was like, this is the exact feeling. Like, it's not appropriate to be angry. Like, this is, it's an emotion. But see, this is, but this is the problem. I think we have so much, we, we put so many things in boxes that we can't even talk about them that I think it's just stupid. Cause you know, we're all people. Everybody has the same set of, I mean, everybody has similar experiences. So what, like, I always love that. It's like, you've never gotten mad ever. Really? Really? You've never been <laughs> angry. <laughs> like, you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Come on. Dude. I love what like, you used to say, like, since when has anger ever helped me or whatever? Yeah. I've never done anything good. 
<laughs> well, it's funny. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't actually get angry that much at all. Really, I rarely ever do. But at the same time, like, I also think it's a natural thing. Like, why wouldn't you talk about it? Like, I hope you tell yeah. me when you get angry because, like, it happens. Like, you know, I get frustrated yeah. by stuff all the time. I do. Like, I just, it's you know, it is natural. I don't think there's a. But that's the sad part. Like, we can't even talk about these things. We put so many boxes around everything. And this is what mm -hmm. Nietzsche says. Like that internalization, right? Like, if you don't, if you don't give those drives expression externally they're going to get expressed inward it's going to turn into guilt or like you know mental illness or whatever or some kind of problem because you're taking the stuff out on yourself rather than, which is not to say yeah. that you should like you know if somebody does something you should immediately like just sock them in the face either obviously mm -hmm. like he thought like you should find healthy ways to express it and i think that's the trick is like how do you find a healthy way to express your anger is it going to the gym is it like doing something taking well, dude, that energy so been, and putting in more studying helpful <laughs> it's been super helpful with lifting because i just get all of it out then but yeah. i also use it as like a prompt for journaling because i noticed that like i think a lot of a lot of this anger comes from repressed anger and stuff from my childhood and Good. so like actually using it as journal prompts to kind of get it out and sometimes when i'm doing that i do feel like literally like i'll i'll like exhale like a deep sigh and i'll just feel That's like good. something let go so i think it you know, I think it's been helpful. My brother, my one brother used to have anger issues. And I think, I know he used to do, he would do like a meditation type breathing thing. And he used to imagine like, it was like, um, he would imagine like taking good energy or mm -hmm. air in, you know, and like mm -hmm. exhaling all that frustration and anger to like calm himself yeah. down. It was a good method. It worked. Yeah. Kind of like mm -hmm. count, you know, when people say like, I, you stop and count or something, you know, like yeah. any of that to like reset your brain. Yeah. Dude, and actually, I'm looking forward to it because when uh when I'm done with this studying stuff that I'm doing for the next like eight weeks or whatever, uh, I'm gonna do some boxing, and I've heard that's really good for getting out some anger. So yeah, that'll be fun. That is actually boxing is very good. It also wears you out. Yeah. Dude, I remember when we had the little fight club. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> we like knocked ourselves retarded for a couple. My weeks. God, it's bad. I know it really does make you like, have a hard i don't know how boxers do it and like function in the world dude like getting hit like that all the time oh my god yeah it's one thing you're boxing classes you're like fighting a bag you know like oh my god it yeah. really does make you feel dumb like it's weird you were in a stupor for like two weeks I mean, it was crazy it was yeah. terrible yeah we yeah. just stopped all, th all thanks to that movie fight club <laughs> yeah that was fun and we even Dude, got at least, we even got at least gear. we had gloves at least we had gloves and like face masks yeah could you imagine if we did like a bare knuckle type thing no Holy cow. i don't like to yeah. get hurt that much so no yeah me neither yeah yeah, yeah it's weird though it is crazy life's life's crazy yeah. yeah but i've been uh also it's a uh, what i've been trying to do is and i haven't been doing this very successfully is taking more time to relax yeah it's hard <laughs> It's no, like, I've been like trying no to do joke. that more. Yeah. I've been trying to do that more recently. And it's very hard, dude. It's really hard. I don't get it. Like, like what time. you were mentioning earlier with like when is enough and everything. I'm like no joke, a workaholic. Like if it if it's not if it's not actually like doing work, it's reading about the same subject or it's just thinking about it, and it's just like well, I, I was have, thinking about I that the other day too, and feeling anxious because you're not doing it. Or, mm -hmm. or like getting on your own case because you're not doing it. It's like because you took a break. I've been feeling that way. Too. And like I have a couple good weeks where I feel like things are going well. I'm like, yeah, I'm not on myself for it. And then like it's immediately switches back on. And it's like, I don't know how to turn. And like, because I feel like if I get too comfortable taking breaks, I'll lose all my momentum. And like then I mm -hmm. just won't do anything, which is stupid yeah. probably. But like, you know. We should start a Workaholics Anonymous 12-step program. We should. Right? Probably. Yeah, I mean, it's only it's only a matter of time. Yeah, eventually it's going to happen to you because you can't. Well, it's like it's a catch 22, too, because like I love what a lot of what I do. So it's like it's also the things I would do in my downtime anyway. And that makes it hard because it's like I don't want to spend. Mm. It's also doing it's also like you don't we don't punch a clock. So it's like it's on our own time. So it's like you yeah. always have you're always at work. Essentially, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. True. You make a good point because this is essentially what i've been dreaming about doing since i was a kid so like yeah i guess part of it What's no it? part of it is that because i do like i notice like i don't push stuff off as much because like, i enjoy doing it. so like i I'm, I'm excited to sit down so like but it does feel weird because like i do there are days where i don't want to do anything but then i still feel bad about not doing anything and it's like yeah yeah it's just funny because like the things that are my hobbies are now seeming like a struggle like it's hard to get me to play video games or it's 
hard to get yeah. me to read a book or it's yeah. hard to get me to paint little miniatures or whatever else it is. Like it's actually a struggle to do the things that are my hobbies. Dude, I've That's been having a hard crazy. time getting, like, I've been reading this one book and I've been having the hardest time getting through it. And it's not that it's not a good book. I just haven't, I, I haven't been able to focus when I'm reading. It's like weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy how it happens. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's good to be aware. I think it's always better to be aware of these things than not though. Cause at least then we can keep trying to take steps to like slowly improve on it, you know, rather than just mm -hmm. not. Cause that's what I'm always afraid of is leaning all into it. And then just like waking up one day and like, all I've done is work for like years. You know what I mean? And like yeah. everything else. I think, is apart. you know, I sometimes <laughs> have these thoughts that kind of like, cause we're, we're putting so much focus and intention on these certain things. And it's like, Sometimes I worry, I'm like, am I going to regret doing this at the end of my life? But then I think back to the end of my life and I'm like, if I spent my life doing this, then it was a darn good life. So, yeah, I mean, I think all the time, caution like, to the wind. Well, there's time. No, I agree with you. There's times like, especially like the project we've been working on with like brother and stuff. Like, I feel like, like, I'm like, this takes so much effort. But then it's like, I also really like doing it. So it's like, you know what, what I regret? No, even if it doesn't end up being what I hope it will be, I still won't regret it. Because at least we tried it. And like, I think that's mm -hmm. also a really good thing. It's mm -hmm. just tough because I think it is like finding something you love. You also just want to do it all the time. And it's like, which is cool. It's also just bad too because it's like, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I feel like there's always so many people telling you what's right and what's wrong and what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And it's just like, just want to shut these people up and just. Well, they them. don't know either. That's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. have no, no idea either. So it doesn't matter. Just don't yeah. listen to me. I know. People are freaking oh. nuts. Listen to me because I know. Yeah, like, clearly. Yeah. We're the wokest guys <laughs> ever. Gosh. The whole know, woke right. culture is crazy. It's all the world's nuts. It is. There's yeah. too much information at all times. You can't. Mm -hmm. you can't I know. We were just meant to live in small little clans, very separate from each other, and just, you know. Everybody, everybody has a task and a role and a function, and it feels good. You know what I mean? Like, even yeah. the town lunatic or whatever has a purpose, you know? It's like, yeah. now it's like we don't have that. <laughs> I find it so interesting how, like, both simultaneously there's arguments that the world is overpopulated and that there's an underpopulation problem. I'm like, <laughs> there's how is that clearly possible? something wrong with our information. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's crazy? Do you know what's funny? I read, this is totally way off topic, but I read this the other day. Did you know there used to be a guy, and it was somebody who owned a watch, that they would get hired by people to wake them up and they would walk around town with a stick and just poke their windows <laughs> at like 6 a.m. to wake them up for work. Ooh, yeah. The watchman. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. crazy. It was like a whole job. I was like, that's crazy. So you get up at like, go around your windows, hit the window, get paid that's like whatever, crazy. a hay penny or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's cool. I know. It's hard to imagine there was a time before time. Yeah, right? Like when one person in town had a clock or one person in like or your district. When it just didn't exist. Yeah. Like you just, you just woke up when you when the cows needed to be milked or whatever and you went to I heard yeah. I sometimes try and like I I had this thought this week cuz I heard it somewhere where like you know uh oh yeah. Farmers don't get that upset about getting stuff done because they know that the cows are always going to need to be milked. And this is clearly before like the yeah. electronic milkers and everything. But like you can't milk a cow all the way in one day. And that's what I'm trying to do with studying and with work yeah. and with everything. Like I'm trying to milk the whole entire cow today. And I just, yeah. I just try and imagine that like, come on, let's get it all out. We today. need your lifetime production now. <laughs> We're not waiting. Let's go. Yeah, he just the cow just shrivels up. <laughs> no. Yeah, it is. Well, no, that's a really good way to think about that. I like that because, like, that's that's exactly what I feel like I'm trying to do all the time. Is like get all of it out at once. And it's like, well, you can't. That doesn't work. You know, it's funny. I think about that. Dude, back in the day, we had such a better relationship. I think probably with death and with like time. Because mm -hmm. people died constantly. So, like, that was, yeah. like, I mean, you know, that was, like... Life life was the abnormality back then. Yeah, literally, dude. Literally. It was, like, the abnormality. And... You're like, you're like, alive? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and you have a skill? <laughs> like, yeah. what? Yeah. But, like, I think that there was just a different sense of, like, 
Or maybe, I don't know. It's so funny because you also read too, like, you know, whenever a new form of communication came out, people worried that it was too fast. Like when the printing press came out, they were worried like information was flying around and that was books, you know? Yeah. Like, it's just interesting because like, I think we run into the same problems over and over again because we keep advancing. But like, we don't adapt. We're very slow. So it's like, I think that's always been the issue with humans. It's like we, from a culture standpoint, we're way ahead of like from our biological standpoint. They're out of sync. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna this whole like anxiety epidemic is going to turn well, out pretty interesting. It. Yeah. Like how many people have anxiety, depression, everything? Because it's just too much information, I think. We're not meant to deal with this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's too fast paced. And there's and if there's so much pressure put on everyone to participate in it and be part of it, you know? Yeah. I've found it really interesting recently. Like people are blown away that I wake up early in the morning. And they're like, why? And I'm like, well, because I wake up and I spend some time doing my own stuff and then I work. And they're like, but how? It's so hard to wake up early. And I'm like, let me guess. You play on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram before you go to sleep. And they're like, yeah. I was like, well, I know. You go. Yeah. You probably waste like six hours before bed just scrolling through some BS that you before can Before you know it's three in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looking at stuff like pining over products yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am always grateful, dude, that we were in school before cell phones came out. And they came out when we were like high school. But like, because they weren't even smartphones back then. Like, you couldn't go on the internet. Like, mm -hmm. we, because I don't feel bad about not participating. But I could totally see how, like, kids now, probably there's so much pressure probably to participate that it's like, how could you not? You know, like, I well, can see dude, that. I'm glad that back in, I think it was like 2008 when Tim Ferriss wrote the book, The Four Hour Work Week. Like, one of the first principles of that was like, do a, uh, disconnect from like all social media all news outlets all everything and i yeah. basically since then have been totally disconnected and it's been one of the best things ever because you don't need it, it it's yeah. you're, you're convinced people convince you like people used to say to you like it used to, when, the, when you used to get an actual physical paper people used to say it was good to read the paper and it was because like most of the people writing the paper had very good vocabularies they were good writers <laughs> so you would they learn educated <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like now it's like the stuff you're reading, it's not, it's so pumped out so fast. Like people aren't working. Like that was and back when just, we used to work on stories. For, yeah. They would work on these like investigative stories and stuff for weeks. Or even when they wrote like about like the dog show in town, it was well-written. Like now it's just, mm -hmm. you know, I find errors in everything that I read now. It's like ridiculous. Pumped out it's as fast as out. possible. A, a large majority of it is quality. just AI. Yeah. It's like just, yeah. Made up like totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. But that pendulum yeah. hopefully will swing back, right? Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see. We will see. Time if it's done, done swinging. Yeah, yeah, so, once it's done. Yeah. So whatever the heck the topic was, how are you doing? I'm doing <laughs> I think right. that was the topic. Yeah. yeah. How are you good. doing? Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, doing pretty well. You know, life's good. Life's good. It's got its yeah. challenges, but it's got its blessings. It does have a lot of blessings. That's the nice mm -hmm. part. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, so that's all for this episode of the Existential Stoic Podcast. If you haven't had enough, like you're one of the three people who are still listening, well, guess what? There's a whole bunch more episodes. I think we have like 600 some episodes out there already. Wait, well, it, that, because it, we have like almost 400. Oh, I think we have yeah, almost like, 400 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because YouTube got rid of YouTube. I know. Podcast. What did YouTube do? They like they just they got rid the of videos. Google. Yeah, they got rid of Google Podcasts, and they're like, they were like, well, connect it to your YouTube channel, then it's a podcast. I was like, okay, so I did that, and then all it did was it made an audio video for every video. So now we just double. I was like, great, thanks. Uh -huh. okay. You know, whatever. Well, anyways, there's tons of other content you can both listen and watch. And do it simultaneously, <laughs> apparently. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, like, leave a good review, all that fun stuff. But it's a pleasure having you guys around. We're glad that you do join oh, us when did. you do. And uh, this is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. I'll see you later, Danny. Later, Randy. <laughs>